We're getting into the hard stuff now. Most people call this hard and it's because it's so different. We went over this a little bit on Wednesday just to help you prepare psychologically. Um, looked at, for instance, the graph of y equals 2 to the x and at its um, inverse y equals log base 2 to the x. Well, we're going to talk about that today. So what we start off doing on your homework is converting converting between exponential functions and logarithmic functions and between logarithmic functions and exponential functions. And here you see a typical, you know, the formula for an exponential function right here where A is a number, okay, raised to the X power, and then going over to its logarithm which is exactly equivalent, okay? Just finds different things. And the reason we need to be able to do both simultaneously is that exponential functions grow so fast. It's very, very difficult to get any kind of accurate measurement out of them. So we switch to the matching logarithm, which grows at a much more slow rate. Typically the growth of diseases. You may have watched this during the first uh, weeks or months of COVID. Uh, the daily reports would show a graph of the growing number of cases of COVID in the United States. Well, that was logarithmic or a derivative of a logarithmic, not a derivative like in calculus, but something derived from that, called a logistical function. Okay, so let's look at how you go about getting the inverse function of an exponential function. Here you have the formula for an exponential function, y equals a number raised to the x power. Now, x here is the exponent, and what holds up the exponent is the base. And then I just call this the other, because you're going to be seeing that um, um, when we're actually doing logarithmic equations, you've got a base and, and exponential functions, exponential equations. We've got a number raised to a power, and then we've got another number. What do you call it? Well, I call it the other. And I pretty well stick to that throughout all of this homework and the next. All right, so um, you know that to find the inverse function of any function, you switch the X and the Y. Now y is the exponent, a is the base still because it's just the number, and x is now in the position of the other. So you switch the x and the y as part of finding the inverse function of a one-to-one -one function. And we talked a lot on Wednesday about how exponential functions are one-to-one -one functions, so they have inverses. Now it took hundreds of years and an accident to be able to find the something more than x equals a to the y. Mathematicians just were not able to find the inverse function of an exponential function until it was found accidentally by a Scottish mathematician. The inverse function of this taken from x equals a to the y, is that y, the exponent, equals log, L-O-G, base a, there's the a, it's the base, of what now, rather than being the other, is called the argument. So the other number is put in here. 
So log base A of X equals Y, where Y, this number, is always the exponent. Logarithms are exponents. You need to say that to yourself over and over again. So here's your first homework problem with my notes. 1024 raised to the one fifth power equals four. What we're supposed to do is not say is that true or false, it's true. But instead convert it to a logarithmic function. How would you say this in logarithms? So you have to look at the parts. One fifth is the exponent. 1024 is the base holding up the exponent. And then there's this other number. To change this to a logarithmic function, we take the base 1024, put it down here beside the lower part of the G. You take the other number and put it in here, where now it's called the argument. So let's say argument, arg, and here's the base. And this, this number over here is always the exponent. That seems hard at first, but then it gets easier. We can go the other way also. We can go from log base A of X equals Y over here, back here. Why? Because these are exactly equivalent. You can always go back and forth between exponential functions and logarithmic functions, exponential equations and logarithmic equations. Here's the second, this is number two in your homework. We're supposed to change log base three of 243 equals five to the matching exponential function. So we're going back this way. It helps to label. This number down here is always the base. This number in here, when I was a kid, you had to put it in parentheses. You had credit taken off if you didn't put it in parentheses. Now they don't. What do I know? Okay, anyway, this number though is called the argument, which is also, it's going to translate into the other number. This is the exponent. So when we change it to its matching exponential function, here's the exponent, here's the base, here's the argument, the argument goes here. Or you can call it the other. All right, now you've got like, I don't know, eight homework problems that are all like this. And we're going to do them all because you're very new at this. Most of you are. And if you've had the class before, it's probably been a while. 
so here's number three over here, or actually at some point I started skipping problems that were exactly like other problems, but I think this is still number three. And up here, this is number one. Here's the problem. We're going to convert this to a logarithmic equation. It's like translating languages. Here's the base, here's the exponent. The base always holds up the exponent. I'm going to say that over and over again to help you remember it. So base. Exponent. And then there's that other number. That's just because I don't have a name for it. The other number becomes the argument over here. The base goes down there. And on the other side of the equal sign, that's where the exponent goes. And the way you say this is log base 10 of 100,000 equals 5. Only There is a little trick here. It's not a trick. What should I call it? A little warp, maybe, in the translation. Because we live in a base 10 number system, log base 10 is used almost all the time. And for that reason, very early on, it was decided to just drop the base. So actually the way that you would write this would be log 100,000. And in your calculator, you don't put the parentheses equals five. And when you don't see a base, when there is no base down there, the base is 10. It's this log right here. We can even do this problem over here. The log, the word log is log base 10. The log on your calculator is log base 10. The log of 100,000, so 100, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, close parentheses, enter is five. It's a very true statement. Now, number four, this one, whenever you have E, E is a number, remember, that's about 2.7, like pi is about 3.14. It's a universal constant, just like pi is. After four, I started skipping the repetitions, or not all of them, but some of them. E to the negative five power. Okay, E, the number E to the negative five power equals P, whatever P is. Okay, let's write out what this stuff is. This is the base. Whatever holds up the exponent is the base. This is the exponent. And for lack of a better word, 
This is the other. To translate this into a logarithmic equation, first you do this. The base goes down here. The exponent, negative five, goes over here. And the other goes here and becomes what we call the argument of the function, the logarithm function. But this is another case like this. Log base E is used in the sciences all the time. You'll see that on the very last day of class. Well, the last day of doing new material. Because of that, and because log was already taken, someone decided to call this the LN, the natural log. So log base E is LN. So log base E of P is going to be the LN of P equals negative five. You're going to have to remember both of those. You have a calculator to help you. Here is LN. Right above LN, you see e to the x. <clears throat> e to the x. So that helps you remember. Right above the log key, you have 10 to the x. So this helps you remember. Log is really log base 10. LN is really log base E. Best I can do to help you remember. But right now is the perfect place to make a note. Let's make it in red, red-ish. Not red because a lot of people can't see red. So this has has blue in it, which makes it kind of reddish purple. Okay. Um, the word log is called the common logarithm. The word LN, I guess you call it a word, is called the natural logarithm. You're going to see that we use it repeatedly when we're talking about the growth of populations and the growth of money. Imagine that. It just comes up automatically. Nobody invented E, it was always here. Nobody invented pi, it was always here. Pi and E and some other, other universal constants were discovered, they weren't made by people. Okay. So now here we go again. We have log of 0 0.01, and I'm not sure what number that is now. The log of 0 0.01. Oh, what about the base? 
you have to know that if you don't see a base here, the base is 10. Oh, I like that. We'll put 10 down here. That's the base. Right? That's the base. This is the argument, arg. This is the exponent. In fact, if you're interested, this is the exponent that the base is raised to to get that answer. As you can see when we come over here, the base 10 raised to the negative 2 will give you on the calculator 0 0.01. Okay, now, here we have to convert the ln of 23 equals 3.1355. This is what I personally do. I change this to log base E of 23 equals 3.1355, where I can actually see the base. I can see the argument. Of course I could anyway. And I can see the exponent. so that this goes right into this. Here's the base, here's the exponent, the argument becomes the other. So base, exponent, other. All right. Now, let me make this a little smaller. This is the first task in the homework. Do you want to discuss it? You're going to have to work at this. You're having to memorize very alien things. It's like somebody put you down on Mars and you discover tablets written in another language. I have a question. Sure. So whenever we converted the last uh, problem mm -hmm. and it says LN, we didn't use 10 as the let me see here as the exponential so you mean the base yeah the base sorry so no problem. do we ever have to use 10 as a base and when it's ln or only for no, log? only for log for ln the base is e oh okay and um and e is a number so whenever it's log, it's always be 10, not, never a different number, right? That's correct. Okay. If it's a different number, it'll be um, it'll be written that way. All righty, thank you. Like log base 3 is log base 3. Log base 1024 is log base 1024. But just log is log base 10, and just ln is log base e. Yes. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, th that's an awesome question. Good, more. Okay, we move on. 
to something more applied. We're going to use a calculator. Oh, imagine. Log base 5 of 12, it says round to four decimal places. <clears throat> OK. There's a way that everybody can do it, and then there's a way that that some people can do it, depending on the kind of calculator. We'll go over both. Log base 5 of 12 equals. Well, you can't just use the log button and you can't just use the LN button. Because you need a specific base. But there's a way around that called the change of base formula. The cob, C, O, B, corner of the cob. Here it is. Well, I guess I should write that in black. So let's do that first. Let's erase it. I think black is easier to see. Log 12, in other words, log base 10 of 12, divided by log base 10 of 5. In other words, I change to base 10. Log 12 divided by log 5. Let's do it over here. Log 12. You must close the parentheses or you won't get the right answer. Divided by log Five. Uh, uh, that's a two. Log five and close the parentheses. So this is what you want. You hit enter. And there's your answer. We'll give it a minute here. We're going to have to round this, but I wanted to put the whole answer over here. There. OK. Log 12 over log 5 is that number, and we're supposed to round to four decimal places. So one, two, three, four. I look over here at the fifth decimal place, and I see that this five will cause the nine to go up to a 10. So our answer is going to be 1.54. 39 will go up to 40. Five, four, instead of three, nine, you're gonna have four, zero. And so that is your answer. It's also true that you can change to any base. So if you take the LN, of 12 over the LN of 5, you will get the same answer. Let's do it real fast. The LN of 12, close parentheses, divided by the LN of 5, close parentheses. Same exact number. 
Now, you're about to think that log 12 equals ln 12 and log 5 equals ln 5, but that's not true. Just watch. Log 12 is that number right there. Now I'm going to take the ln of 12. No, that's 15. I want 12. There you go. Close parentheses. The ln of 12 is an entirely different number. Same thing is true for log 5. It's important that we take the time for you to see this. Log 5. Enter is that number. Log. Yeah, yeah, log 5 and now we're going to do ln 5. Ln 5. Entirely different number. So log 12 does not equal ln 12. Log 5 does not equal ln 5. However, the ratios, the fraction answer, are equal. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. You can try it yourself at home, but not unsupervised. Okay. So I'm going to make a note of that also, written in math ease because it takes less room, that log 12 does not equal ln 12 and log 5 does not equal the ln of 5. It's an easy mistake to make, but you don't want to make it on the final. Yeah. Okay. So now Everybody can do the change of base formula. And there are some more homework problems where we'll use the change of base formula. I tend to not use LN for that. That's just a personal preference. I could if I wanted to. I use LN for science problems, as you'll see. Okay, um, now. For the uh, newer operating system, click the math button. Now come all the way down past the numbers to A, and there you see the word log base. All right, log base. L O G. B, A, S, E, and that's at A, colon, on the math menu in your calculator. I'm going to click Enter. See what it has. It has a little box for you to put the base and a little box for you to put the argument. So, log base 5 of 12, I could write this way, log base 5 of 12, enter. And it's that same number right there, the same number we got for log 12 over log 5 or ln 12 over ln 5. So if you've got it, feel free to use it, but you don't need it because you've got the change of base formula. And I'm go going to use the change of base formula for these other two homework problems. Okay, log base four of 40 round to four decimal places. So I'm going to say, 
log 40, you take the, the, the argument and then you take the base. The log, which is log base 10 of 40, over log four. That's the base. So this is the argument, this is the base, arg. And base. And what does that equal? Well, let's find out. Log 40, close the parentheses, divided by log four, close the parentheses, enter. Okay. So we have 2.660964047 and actually it's the decimal, what's called the decimal expansion goes on forever. As far as we know. All right, here's the whole number part. Here's the decimal part. One, two, three, four. And then the fifth decimal place is a six which again will cause the nine to go up to a 10, but there's a zero here in the third decimal place. So that allows me to write a 10 there. So my answer is going to be 2.6610. And that's the answer. log 40 over log 4, change of base formula. And finally, log, log base 3 of 0 0.13, so I'll write that as <laughs> again, log 0 0.13 divided by log 3. Now, that's how I was taught to do it. That's how your calculator requires it. However, the book does not always use parentheses. Just like I didn't use parentheses here. My algebra teacher would have given me points off. But that's life. OK. Here we go. Clear. Log 0 0.13. No. Do it again. Log zero point zero point thirteen close parentheses divided by log three close parentheses. Enter. And here's my answer. Negative. Want it to be as clear as possible. Okay. Negative 
and you don't know if the nine is really there because your calculator rounds so it can fit the decimal part in here. So, and you know, really, really, ah! Okay, I'll be good. Er, good er. I'll, I'll show you what I was gonna do in a minute. Again, we round to four decimal places, right? Yes, okay. So, here's one, two, three, four, and the fifth decimal place, eight, will cause this zero to go up to a one. So our answer is going to be negative 1.8571. The point I was so brilliantly going to make is that any, well, of course, this is a rounded answer that you get out of your calculator anyway, and then I'm rounding it again. OK, so it's more appropriate. To put double squiggles, which means it's an approximation. So I'm going to go back and do that. Double squiggles. Double squiggles. Double squiggles. Double squiggles means about. Or approximately. Okay. Any discussion about this? Pretty easy to do. Anybody can do it using the change of base formula. People who want to get fancy, if their operating system will let them, can do that. Let us move on to the last part of the homework. Namely, word problems and scientific notation. But not yet. Okay, all of these problems have little tricks in them. You have to read it very, you have to read the problem very carefully. The average walking speed R of a person, let me make this bigger. Nah, okay. Well, we'll do the best we can. The average walking speed R of a person, I, I experimented with this yesterday. I bet I could get it up to 200. Yeah, let's go for 200. The average walking speed R of a person living in a city of population P in thousands is modeled by this function. R of P equals 0 0.37 times the ln of P plus 0 0.05. Where R, the walking speed, is in feet per second. 
The population of Kalamazoo is 77,000. Actually, it's more if it's Kalamazoo, Michigan. But the population of Kalamazoo is 77,000. Find the average walking speed of people living in Kalamazoo. So you're finding the walking speed and there's a formula for the walking speed of that depends upon the number of people you live with who are packed together into that area. All right, well, the trick here that you have to pay real attention to is population P, I mean, that's pretty straightforward, but population P in thousands. Now they tell you that the population of Kalamazoo is 77,000. And that's the population, P-O-P, -P, is 77,000. But this P already takes the thousand into account. So P is 77 because P is in thousands already. So you have to be careful. Now we're going to use our formula. R, that is the walking speed when you've got population P equals 0 0.37 times the LN of P plus 0 0.05. We can do this. R of 77, that is the walking speed when P is 77, which means 77,000, equals 0 0.37 times the LN of 77 plus 0 0.05. Cool. We're going to put this in the calculator. Zero point thirty seven. I like to say times, so I don't know if I really need to. LN seven seven close parentheses plus zero point zero five. Enter. And I get R of seventy seven equals, let's see, I can't get the whole thing because it's scrolled, but I can do that, so I'm going to do that. All right, now we have to look and see, okay, what do we round to? Round to the nearest tenth as needed. Tenth is one decimal place. Here's one decimal place. That's 1.6. The second decimal place is five, which will mean that five is able to round the six up to a seven. So our answer is going to be 1.7 feet per second. However, you just put 1.7 in the answer box and notice that feet per second is already written for you. 
So what you have to remember here is to carefully read every word. Don't speed read it. Yeah, I know P means population, but what about the population? That it's already counted in thousands. Which again, is going to mean that you have to adjust the population they give you for whatever city they decide to give you. And then you just throw it in the uh, formula and you get your answer and you round it to one decimal place, the tenths place. Okay. Any questions about this? Any discussion? Okay. Now this was the importance of logarithms when I was growing up. That is what we learned about in my science classes in elementary school. And that was that logarithms were used to measure the strength, the magnitude of earthquakes. And I was fascinated by that. Now they don't use the Richter scale anymore. They use a different scale, but it's still logarithmic, I believe. All right, the magnitude R, the bigness, measured on the Richter scale of an earthquake of intensity I is defined as R equals log, log base 10, log I over what's called I naught, I sub zero, where I naught is a minimum intensity used for comparison. You see this a lot in the sciences. If the intensity of an earthquake is 10 to the 7.04 power times I naught, which means it's 10 to the 7.04 um, times stronger than this smallest earthquake. What was the magnitude R on the Richter scale? That's a lot of words. We're looking for the magnitude R. as always, there. We're looking for the magnitude R. Okay, that's magnitude. Think of that as bigness. It's a number assigned magnitude, assigned to show the destructive power of the earthquake the amount of shaking. Okay, and what that equals is log. Of the ratio of the intensity. To a minimum intensity. And I suppose if you're a geologist, you know what number that is. OK, so. Here we're told that the intensity I. Of an earthquake is this. So I'm going to use substitution. R. Equals log. Ten raised to the 7.04 times 
times I naught over I, whoops, let me do this. I naught. Well, you can see right away conveniently the I naughts cancel and you're left with log. Let's say base 10. It is base 10 of 10 to the 7.04 power, and you're about to discover something, if I can write my seven correctly. You're about to discover a cool property of logarithms, an incredibly cool property of logarithms. But first, let's put it in the calculator. log of 10 carat 7.04. Now, if you've got this kind of calculator or operating system, you're going to have to hit the right arrow key to come down and then put your paren. You have to do the same thing in my math lab. I think. OK, um, anyway, we're going to calculate this. The log of 10 to the 7.04 power is. Tomorrow we deal with this more in depth, but right now, tomorrow, Wednesday, but right now, it's enough to tell you this. There's a cool property of logarithms that says when the base matches the argument, the answer is the exponent. So for instance, log base three of three, to the seventh power is seven. Because this number matches that number. They're both bases and the bases are exactly the same. Log base two of two to the fifth power is five. How about this, log base seven of seven equals one. Why? Because seven is raised to the one power, the invisible one power. And log base E of E to the fifth power is five. What does that mean really? That means the LN of e to the fifth power is five. This is something you want to memorize because it will really cut short the calculations you're going to have to make in the very near future, as in next week. OK, now this was really a very basic problem where you're at right now. All you would have to do is throw that into the calculator like I did. So let me take a picture of it. And if all else fails, you can usually do that. All right, 
discussion about this. Okay. All right, now you're going to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. If you're a nursing major, you're going to see this again. Even though you might not want to. Of course you don't want to. But you're still going to have to deal with measuring the pH of patient's blood if you're a nurse. OK, the pH, the acid base balance. The pH of fruit juice is 4.2. Find the hydronium ion concentration. Ooh, look at that ugly thing. The hydronium ion concentration of the juice and use this formula. The pH equals the negative logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration. And then if that's not bad enough, you're gonna give your answer in scientific notation. And they talk about moles per liter. That's why you've got to take chemistry so you know what moles are. I used to know. I don't need more, but I do remember studying them. They're not the moles that live in the ground, I promise. Something about 10 to the 24 or something like that. All right, well, we're going to be solving for H sub 3, 0 plus. Three parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, and it's lost an electron. So now it has a positive charge. I remember that much. Okay. Well, we're going to be solving for that. I propose to make this problem easier right now. Let X equal the hydronium ion concentration so that we can rewrite this what do you say ph oh it's a little p and a big h ph equals negative log x. That looks so much better. And we're going to solve for x. OK, so 4.2. The pH is 4.2. 4.2 equals negative log that's negative one times log X. Quiet, you've been good so far. Doggone it. I forgot to put it on uh, airplane mode. There, okay. Um. All right, now to solve for log X, I've got to solve for log X before I can solve for X. That makes sense. So I'll divide out negative one by dividing both sides by it. Okay, now that's going to give me negative 4.2 equals the log of X which is really log base 10. Well now, this is a logarithmic equation, which means this is the exponent, this is the base, this is the argument, 
which also is the other. So the way to solve for X is to translate this into the other number equals the base raised to the exponent. So we're going to have 10 raised to the negative 4.2 equals X. And now, life would be easy enough if all I had to do was take 10 and raise it to the negative 4.2 power. I haven't forgotten about the scientific notation, just wait. 10 raised to the negative 4.2 power is. This ugly number right here, and it's already in scientific notation. Yes, it is. Just checking the answer. Let's look at this really closely. Oh, that's pretty clear. Equals X. That 10 to the negative 4.2 is 6.30957344 E to the negative 5. Piece of cake. Okay. Here's what this means. The letter E right here means exponent. What this is telling you is that negative 5 is an exponent. But on what? 10. Scientific notation is always in times 10. So now let's go back up and read the answer and read the instructions. This is the answer in scientific notation. Negative five is the exponent. What we care about is how many decimal places do we round to? And this would seem to say round, ah, round, to the nearest tenth, that is one decimal place. Okay, so let's go back down here. We're going to round this part right here to one decimal place. The second decimal place is a zero, so this is not able, that's a slash, this is not able, the zero is not able to round the three up to a four. So our answer is going to be 6.3, if it were in the calculator, E negative five. But what E, trans, e negative five translates to is times 10 to the negative five. That's what E negative five means, times 10 to the negative five. So X is about 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Now the instructions say to write it in 
in scientific notation. But if this were not scientific notation, I'm going to show you what 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5 is. This is code. What this is code for is 6.3 with the decimal point moved five units to the left. The negative sign means go left. So one, two, three, four, five. Put a decimal point there and put a zero in each one of those little valleys. So what X equals in decimals is 0 0.000063. And I completely forget what X was. Oh, that's the hydronium ion concentration in moles per something. Moles per liter. Moles per liter, yes. Anyone knows that? However, written in scientific notation, this in your calculator becomes this. And rounding to one decimal place means come over here to the decimal part and round to one decimal place. So let's put your answer in the answer box. And we're done. Okay, this was your introduction to logarithms. There's a lot more coming in the next two weeks. What you need to do, the primary thing you need to do is the homework. And if it says past due, ignore that. If you have a zero on it, ignore that. You can always redo it and get points. I don't take points off. You know that by now. You've got to know that. Um, and then since April 30th, is a very important day. April 30th is the very last day to make up any work. I should say any old work. The only work you're going to be able to do after April 30th is the practice final exam and the final exam. Everything else will be closed. Okay, that's important enough for me to write it on your homework. Remember that, okay? This has to be a priority. Has to be. Okay.
I know your mouths are probably hanging open about this. So go meditate on it. But this little trick of letting the uh, hydronium ion concentration in moles per liter equal X just makes everything easier. OK, I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Feel free to contact me. Um, I am in 15 minutes going over to my office hours in the helpline, the help area thing. So maybe I'll see you there. But until then, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh.